Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaver. In today's episode, I'd like to show you how to use item effects in your projects. I'm sure that you're all familiar with track effects. We use them in most projects to place effects on a desired track, but you can also place effects directly on items. There are some cases where it may be beneficial to place your effects directly on the item instead of putting it on a track and automating parameters if you want that effect to only appear in a certain part. And before we get started, I'd also like to thank everyone for helping make this community what it is today. I started the Let's Talk About Reaper YouTube channel on October the 9th of 2020. Since then, I've put out over 60 episodes and we've grown to over 3,000 subscribers. Fast forward to May of 2021, we started the Discord server and we've grown to over 1,000 members. If you'd like to be a part of our rather active community on Discord, click the link in the description below. Thanks to each and every one of you for the words of encouragement, for the coffee, and just for helping to make this community what it is today. Now let's take a look at item effects. The project I have open is a song that I'm working on for a local band. There's a part in the chorus right before the lead guitar comes in where we use the EQ trick that I talked about a few videos back. If you've not seen that episode, click the link above to take a look. Let's take a listen to it in its current state. Now that sounds pretty good to my ear, but I think I'd like to add something like maybe a tape stop effect on the second guitar as that break happens. Now there's a few ways that we could accomplish that. We could add a pitch shift or a tape stop effect to the track itself, but then we would have to automate that parameter to where it only happens where desired, or we can use item effects. I'm going to close my dock so I can focus a bit more on this section, and let's take a look. This is the part where I'd like to add the tape stop effect, and currently I don't have any guitar there at all, so I'd like to trim this out to bring that back in. I'll move my playhead to the desired location and split the item, and now this item can have its own effect. Now you may notice I've got a few buttons across the top of my item here that you may not have. If you'd like to have those added to yours, go to Options, Preferences, and under the Appearance section, click on Media. Here we have a section called Media Item Buttons, and you can place a check mark on anything that you'd like to show up above the media items in the Arrange view. The one that controls our effects option is this No Effects. This will make a button show up even if the item doesn't have any effects on it. So if I click that button, that brings up an effects chain for that item. Now if you followed the channel for any length of time, you know that I'm big on keyboard shortcuts to enhance workflow. Another way to bring up the Item Effects dialog is to highlight the item in question and press Shift-E. Now that we've got the effects chain pulled up for that item, let's search for a pitch plugin. I'll just use Rea Pitch. And now I've got that added just to this item. Now I think that what I would like to do to create the effect that I'm looking for is to automate the pitch over time. The parameter that I'd like to automate is the shift full range. So to accomplish that, I can move this slider. I'll return it back to its original position, but I wanted to move it so that it's the last touch parameter then click Parameter, and you'll notice here it shows the last touched item. Now I can click Show Media Item Take Envelope, or Envelope, or however that word is pronounced. I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments. Now we can see that I have one point here on the automation envelope, and I'll add another point a bit further down by holding Shift and clicking on the line. Now I can bring this line down to automate that over time, and I can adjust the slope by holding Alt and left-clicking and dragging to change the curve. Let's solo the track and see how that sounds. That does what I'd like it to do, but it may need a little bit of fine tuning, so let's trim this back a little bit, move our envelope point, and just play with it a little bit further to refine it and make sure that it sounds right in context. That may need to go back just a little bit further. I think that sounds pretty good. As you can see, item effects can be very helpful for applying an effect to a very specific part of a song, and in my opinion is a lot more efficient and elegant than adding the effect to the track and automating that parameter in and out as desired. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon link below. I like coffee.
You didn't take your vitamins today. No better time than the present. I bet this tastes great with coffee.